Gende Goza is one of the slowest characters in Granblue Fantasy Ruling that relies on his martial arts to throw devastating blows with his raging fists. If you like a bulky character that is all about going in and charging up a big powerful punch to blow through the enemy's HP, then you're going to love Ganda Goza. In this video, I will be going over all the skills, weapons, sigils, and overall optimizations so that you can get the most out of Ganda Goza and his build. With that being said, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and let's get started. As I said before, Gena Gozu's core gameplay loop is all about charging up his meter, the eternal rage, to then be able to use his raging fist, this powerful charged attack, that is going to consume them all and deal a ton of damage, like so. So the question here is, how do you charge up his meter to be able to use these charged attacks as much as possible? Well for starters, his basic attack combo, much like with Siegfried, has a special timing that you can see right there whenever the character is shining, and if you perform these attacks at the right time, you'll be dealing more damage and whenever you finish the combo you'll be able to receive extra meter. If you simply mash the attack button, as you can see right here, the damage output is going to be much lower, and once you finish the combo, you're going to get a lot less meter as well. Now, one very important thing that Gandagosa can do is also use his aerial attacks that you can perfectly time, as you can see right there, and you'll be able to build up your meter. Let's go ahead and do it again. Like so, you're able to fully max out your Raging Fist by just performing a couple of combos in the air. And of course, you can just mash your attack button and you're going to get that combo that doesn't even provide you any rage. So it is very important that you try to master this timing. It takes a little bit of a delay compared to when you do the normal attacks, but if you are able to manage Siegfried's timing down, it is very similar, so just keep that in mind. And of course, if you perform a Link attack, you're going to be able to generate even more Eternal Rage. So if you perform an entire combo and follow it up with a link attack, you'll be able to max out your eternal rage. And here you can see that after some time passes, without you hitting the opponent, your meter will start depleting on its own. So do keep that in mind and try to keep up your aggression, even if your meter is filled up, because you're going to run out of it eventually. Another very important thing about Ganda Goza is that if you're doing his basic combo, and you get the pop for a link attack, you can actually follow it up with a perfectly timed finisher to get all of your eternal rage at once. You don't actually need to hold off on the link attack and do it like this. You can do it like this, incorporate the link attack into the middle of the combo and follow it up with the perfectly timed finisher. It is very important that you keep that in mind, and since Ganagoza is such a slow character, that is going to be a very important thing for you to try to maximize his damage output. One very important thing about Gandagoza is that since you want to land that combo finisher at the end to gain the Eternal Rage, you can actually dodge out of the way in the middle of the combo, so let's go ahead and use a couple of attacks, and you are able to resume the combo from where you had stopped. That is going to allow you to be much more aggressive with Gandagoza and be able to charge up your Eternal Rage much faster. And keep in mind that despite the game's damage cap being so low, you want to make sure that you always charge up your Raging Fist because you're not going to be dealing that much damage if you just tap it like that. One very important thing to note about Gandagoza is that if you charge up his Raging Fist, you can still cancel it by blocking or dodging out of the way, but as you can see, your meter will start depleting immediately if you do this. So while you have the option to protect yourself from incoming danger by dodging out of the way, keep in mind that you're going to need to throw out your Raging Fist as soon as possible, or keep on doing this, basically just dodging and charging it up again to make sure that it does not go down. One thing that is very important to note about Gandagosa's Raging Fist is that you become an interruptible whenever you are charging that Raging Fist. So if we come over here, we get hit by the target dummy, we get flinched. But if we do the Raging Fist, we charge it up and stand in front of the target dummy, we don't get flinched. You are still able to maintain this stance and keep on holding it for as long as you want. So that is very nice. And as you can see right there, if you perform it at the right time, if you release the Raging Fist just as the enemy is about to hit you, you can perform a parry. So that is very nice. Now that we have gone over Gandagoza's basic mechanics, let's go over all of his skills. Let's start off with Gandagoza's most useful skill and that is Eternal Rage, which as the name implies, is going to fill up his Eternal Rage right away. 
One thing to note is that from what I've seen it seems as though that the eternal rage that you get from using the skill actually lasts for a very long time and I have never had it run out before so you can use this as a way to ensure that even if a boss is about to move or they are about to enter bloodthirst you still maintain that eternal rage. So it is very useful in that sense. Now the next skill is Lion's Stance which is going to grant hostility to Gandagoza giving him enmity and making enemies more likely to attack him as well as Stout Heart which makes his attacks uninterruptible and Jammed which is an attack buff that is going to increase your attack by up to 100% based on how low your max HP is. That being said, you're very rarely going to take advantage of that jump buff, as it is very easy for you to reach the damage cap with Gandagoza, as you'll see in a moment with the build. The enmity part is a bit nice, especially since Gandagoza does have a skill that is a parry, which we'll talk about in a moment, and gaining Stout Heart will allow him to more easily be able to max out his Eternal Rage meter, so that is always going to be pretty nice. Now the next skill is True Avidia, which is going to grant Gandagoza and the rest of the party 25% more attack. And as you saw right there, we also fill a little bit of our Eternal Rage meter by using True Avidia. It's not a whole lot, but when you combine with your basic attack combo, you're still able to fully max it out by just using the skill and finishing the combo, so it is a very nice tool to have. Now the next Gandagoza skill is called Diana. I'm not too sure how you spell it, but it takes a very long time to activate, but once it is fully activated, Gandagoza will heal himself back up to full and will cleanse himself of any debuffs. It's a very simple skill that provides him some utility and allows him to be much more sustainable, so it is pretty useful in that sense. Now let's take a look at Gandagoza's offensive skills. Infernal Stomp is this big AoE slow that he can perform very easily. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is nice that you have a skill that can provide some party-wide utility. But again, the focus of this character is the Raging Fist, so we're not going to be focusing on this skill a whole lot. Now the next skill is Branding Palm, which as you can see right here is a counter that Gandagoza is able to perform. You stay here in the stance for a very long time, so you're very easily going to be able to parry anything. So let's go ahead and use it against the target dummy here. And as you can see, whenever you perform this skill, you also gain quite a little bit of your Eternal Rage, so it provides Gandagoza with some defensive utility while still being able to resume his attack right after. Now from what I have tested, it doesn't seem like you can resume your combo from where you left off when you use the parry, it seems as though you need to do the combo from the very start. But even so, as you can see right there by using the parry and then finishing the combo, you're able to fully max out your Eternal Rage, so it is a very powerful skill on Gandagoza. Now the next skill on the list is going to be Iron Shoulder, a very simple gap closer that you can very quickly follow up with your basic combo, like so. Sadly, the Iron Shoulder does not provide you with any Eternal Rage, and I really do feel like this would be a very good opportunity for Gandagosa to gain at least 3 stacks of it, just to be able to follow it up with a full combo and get the Raging Fist off. It feels like a wasted opportunity, and I think it's one of those things that is going to help contribute to making Gandagosa's damage just a little bit low compared to the rest of the cast. And the final skill is called Air Hat Skybreaker, where he jumps up into the air and performs this big powerful attack that deals very high stun damage, making it very easy for you to proc a link attack. And if you are close enough to the target, you'll be able to hit them one more time as you land your kick onto them. Again, sadly, this skill does not grant you any eternal rage, so you're going to need to rely on the rest of your skills to be able to fill it up. Now let's go over the gear that I'm running on my Genda Goza build, as there are actually quite some big differences compared to the rest of the cast. As for the weapons, as usual, my recommendations are going to be the critical hit rate weapon, and you're going to want to use this up until you get the Terminus weapon, or if you don't get lucky, the Ascension weapon fully maxed out is going to be a better option, but of course, if you do get the Terminus weapon, that is going to be the best option, as not only does it have amazing stats, it also comes with Catastrophe and Regen, and once you fully max it out, you also get gain Sigil Booster. And Catastrophe is just the best trait in the entire game, raising your attack by 50% and your damage cap by 100% as long as you are at or below 45,000 HP. 
As for my overmasteries, as you can see right there, I have normal attack damage cap up and critical hit rate both at 16%, ideally the normal attack damage cap would be at 20% and frankly that is about it for Gandagoza. The critical hit rate is nice but it's not a must and gaining skill damage cap up would also be nice, but what you really want the most is the normal attack damage cap up to raise the damage of your raging fist. And the reason why critical hit rate doesn't matter as much with Gandagoza is this sigil right here, the Eternal Rage is metal as it will boost the critical hit rate of your Eternal Rage based on how much Eternal Rage you already have as Gandagoza. So with this you'll be able to fully max out on your critical hit rate for your Raging Fist with relative ease. I believe you need 85-90% to critical hit rate to be able to max it out with this sigil and since that is the biggest damage tool that Gandagoza has, this is going to be very important for your damage output. Although at the same time you could opt to remove this sigil instead and go with critical hit rate, but as for his second sigil, the Eternal Rage's Ethos, it will quite simply raise the damage cap of your Raging Fist by 50%, which is just going to allow you to deal more damage with your most powerful tool, so you will always want to have this sigil active. And here's the endgame build that I'm running on Gandagoza. As you can see I have damage cap and guts on my two signature sigils, which means that I will only need three damage cap sigils to be able to reach max level. On this one I am running Potion Hoarder, which is simply going to make my life a lot easier with this character and since he is so slow, I often find myself getting hit a bit more compared to most characters and having the ability to heal myself back up is going to be very nice. And of course Guts being able to survive a hit with 1 HP is going to be very useful. And these two damage caps come with quick cooldown, which as you can see I have it maxed out, reducing my skill cooldown by 20%, which is just going to help me ensure that I have my skills ready as often as possible, which will directly translate to me being able to use my Raging Fist even more often. Now one thing that you might find peculiar about this setup is that I only have one Tyranny Sigil and a couple of quick charge sigils to be able to raise my damage. That is because I am able to hit the damage cap of my Raging Fists as long as I fully charge the Raging Fist, regardless of the meter that I have available, I will always hit the damage cap, and since that is the core mechanic of Gandagos' kit, and since you also hit the damage cap whenever performing the basic attack combo, with only one single Tyranny Sigil and a couple of quick charge sigils, I don't find the need to add even more Tyranny or Stamina to boost the damage of my skills because the most important parts of my kit are already maxed out. And because I'm running max level of Quick Charge, I will be able to perform my Raging Fist and charge it up 30% faster so that is quite nice. And as you can see this Quick Charge Sigil comes with Ages which is going to raise my HP to counter the effect of Tyranny and I also have improved Dodge just to make things a little bit easier for me. Lastly I have War Elemental and 3 different supplementary damage sigils. Of course these are very rare to obtain as War Elemental and these three come from Curio Boxes, but if you cannot find these I would suggest you add even more defensive skills and in that regard as you can see from my weapon I have imbued it with Nimble Onslaught and Dodge Payback. And the sole reason for that is quite simply going to extend the invincibility period that I gained from doing a perfect dodge, which is already going to be easier to do thanks to improved dodge and being able to gain just a little bit more skybound art gauge and reducing my cooldowns and raising my attack by 9% just to deal a little bit more damage with my skills are some decent bonuses. But again, the focus of these two traits is to raise my invincibility period from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. Now as for the skills that I like to run on Gandago, I always like to go with the Iron Shoulder despite not raising your Eternal Rage. I like having a gap closer and the character doesn't have any good ways of catching up to monsters, so I find that this skill is a must. I also have Branding Palm and True Avidia simply for the purpose of raising my Eternal Rage. Branding Palm is nice to have, being able to parry an attack and just be all around safer, and the 25% attack increase from True Avidia is not entirely going to be wasted because the only portions of my kit that are already damage capped are the basic attack combo and the Raging Fist. So Branding Palm and Iron Shoulder would be boosted by me using this skill, so it has some extra utility there. A nice option would be to go with Lion Stance just to gain Stout Heart and again the attack increase to be able to raise the damage of my skills, but personally I prefer to go with this. And finally of course I have Eternal Rage, a skill that I find to be mandatory, as Gendagoza is a character that is all about using the Raging Fist, 
and having a skill that lets you max out your gauge with a single press of a button is going to make things a whole lot easier for you. And this is my current endgame build for Gandagoza, a character that sadly is brought down by the game's damage cap, being so low to the point where his Raging Fist doesn't even deal over 3 million damage. You might be able to get there with Glass Cannon, but personally I find that that is going to be very unsafe, since you are playing a slow character that also has a charged attack, and I really do feel that more of his skills should give him internal rage, because as it currently is, Gandagoza ends up feeling a little bit shafted. That being said, he is still a powerful character in Gramble Fantasy Ruling, and he can perform very well even at the endgame content, so if you like his playstyle, hopefully this build is going to allow you to get the most out of him. Let me know which characters I should cover next, and with that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, happy hunting!